deity worship. Uh, one is more, say, attracted to associating and serving devotees, or preaching, or chanting, or reading, but not so attracted to deity worship. For the neophyte, and that's I'll speak your answer based on the principle of neophyte or new devotee, because it seems like that's the essence of your question. Someone who is just coming in doesn't have that attraction or has attraction for other aspects of devotional service. It helps one to purify their consciousness. It helps one to develop the qualities of the mode of goodness. And coming to the mode of goodness means to execute devotional service effectively. <clears throat> From the lower modes, passion and ignorance, we really can't taste the process of devotional service. So deity worship purifies the consciousness. It helps us to develop a certain routine by which we can practice Krishna consciousness in a regulated way. Because regulation also is a foundation for development. If we do whatever we want, whenever we want, we will get something, but hardly. When it's done in a regulated way, then that, that controls the mind, the senses, and focuses it on the process of pure devotional service. The deity is Krishna. Arche Vishnu Siladi Guru Shu Namriti, and of course the whole verse. Arche Vishnu Siladi is the essence. That anyone who sees the deity is made of stone or wood or any kind of material of this world. The verse is very strong. It says their, their intelligence is coming from hell. <laughs> In other words, they have no intelligence. <laughs> the deity is Krishna himself. And by your devotion, you can awaken that realization within yourself. And that devotion means to serve the Lord according to the rules and regulations as given by the process of beauty worship, which is explained by Sri Narada Muni, Narada Pancharatriki. He's, he, is the, he is the personality who taught, he teaches Pancharatriki. But the, the process is, I mean, the process of deity worship is quite variegated depending on which form of the Lord you're worshiping, where you're worshiping, time, place, circumstances, and so many uh, extenuating principles that either make it functionable this way or that way. So it's quite diverse to be deity worship. But in essence, <clears throat> it's Krishna. That way, when we see the deity, we should think there's Krishna, or there is Jagannath, and there's Lord Nishigadev. Even if you see the picture of the deity, you shouldn't think, oh, it's just a picture. It's not. The form is none different than the Lord. So that form, wherever it appears, is also worshipable. Yes, Akarshini Radha. devotees that have been in the movement for years and years but since COVID they've kind of become hermits and they don't come to the centre but they still practice and they think that they don't need association um, and they think that the only and I said about I, I mentioned about serving devotees but they think that only serving the pure devotees is the way forward I don't know how to bring them back to association. Well, how do they know who's pure and who's not pure? <laughs> we might look around and we think, oh, this person's advantage. You can't. You can't tell. You can to some degree. You can get some indication. But a pure devotee is known by his symptoms and his activities, not simply by his position. Position doesn't illustrate advancement. It has some indication, obviously. But there are persons who have no position that are pure. <laughs> because it's not about seeking any kind of position, it's about their, it's about their relationship that they've developed. 
within their service to the Lord. So that's why we don't judge anyone. We don't know. <laughs> because unless you know that person's heart, you can't really say who's pure and who's not pure. <laughs> so if that's a criteria for association, then they're minimizing their ability to make advancement. And will minimize their opportunity. Because we learn so much in the association of devotees. We learn what to do, what not to do. We get inspiration, ideas that will help us in the process of our devotional service. And what the most important thing is Krishna says, he who says he's my devotee is not my devotee. But he who says he is a devotee of my devotee is my devotee. And the Acharyas, in particular Srila Prabhupada, has emphasized this point by saying, das, 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 anudas, 100 times removed. The more you become the servant, the more you become glorious, and the more you practice devotional service according to how you can make advancement. One who sees himself as servant of Krishna will also see that, that Krishna is in the heart of all living entities. And therefore they want to serve Krishna by serving his devotees also. And there's so many ways you can serve the devotees. So ultimately they're not, they're not getting the full opportunity for spiritual advancement. But I would, in, I would say that there's something else there <laughs> that, there, that had, didn't come up in your question. I think they had anxiety issues. No, because when you're in an association of devotees, you have to act properly. <laughs> you can't do your own thing. <laughs> you have to act as a devotee. And the most important thing is for those who are new, they should be in the position of trying to learn. That's all. To learn. So, to put oneself into association with devotee means there's a certain mood of behavior that is required. And not just be in association. Prabhupada says, the fly is on the king. And the king's on the throne, he's great, and the fly's sitting on the king. But what does the fly have to do with the king? Nothing. <laughs> There's no connection. So to be in physical proximity is not really association. Although there is something there. It's the beginning of association. To, work, to answer the question, association means affection for. And that's what Prabhupada wanted to teach, that we should develop love for each, for each and every devotee. Love in the sense that we work together to support each other and bring each other closer to the goal of Krishna consciousness. Krishna is dear to me, and you also have come for the same reason, so therefore, we're on the, we're, we have the same goal. So, and we, that means we develop an, a, a relationship based on bringing each other to that same goal. <laughs> or helping each other, assisting in whatever way we can. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. Uh, Krishna Das, um, Kaviraj? Yeah. I, I keep calling it was Kaviraj, Kaviraj, hmm? Krishna. Krishna Kaviraj, okay, I'm sorry, I gave him the name, you know, <laughs> I didn't give him the name, somebody gave, told me to, to give you the name, <laughs> see, that's the answer. Process of chanting the holy names, you said. 
you know, it's easier for the devotee that's taking it really seriously. What is that ingredient that makes a devotee take it up really seriously? <laughs> What is that ingredient that makes a devotee take the process of Krishna conscious seriously? Ayi nanda tanuja kinkaram patidam mam visham me bhavam buddha kripaya tavapara pankaja stita duli sadrisha. O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your eternal servant. Somehow I've fallen to this ocean of birth and death. Please, the word please is to emphasize, pick me up. We're in a very unnatural situation, being in this world, being in this material body. We have to get old, we have to die, we get disease, we can't fulfill all our desires. There's so many, many anomalies. We're in an unnatural position, and at the same time, everyone wants happiness. So our desire is to be happy, and that desire is to be happy always. But you can't, not in this world. But you know there is a way, and that's only when we connect with our eternal relationship with the Lord. And that happiness is available because that's where it lies. And that'll be explained in Anandam Bhuti Vardhanam. Lord Chaitanya said that chanting the holy names is an ocean of transcendental happiness. Not just, we had a nice kirtan. Wasn't that kirtan nice? Yes. Beautifully, I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect the place to explode when it did. <laughs> and everybody was dancing and I could see devotees were experiencing the happiness of chanting and dancing. That's our life. That's life. And that happiness is available in other activities of devotional service, but particularly, it's what is, the, what is called the fast track. That's the holy name. You get it immediately. <laughs> because Krishna's name is Krishna. <laughs> The ingredients is we're in this material world and we may not say it, but we are struggling. We have to struggle to live in this world. And struggle is not life. Life is not about struggle. Life is about fulfilling your desire for happiness. That's what life is about. Elena, did you have a question? Inglese or Italiano? You want to speak in Italian? Ajanova, you want to translate for her? A real friend is one who knows you and wants to make you happy. That's a real friend. Who he knows, that person knows you. We can be friendly with everyone, but we can have friends with a few. Krishna is called Suhit, it's one of his names. Suhit, that means he is Suhidam Sarvadehinam. He's the friend of all living entities. He is your best friend because he knows you and he knows what will make you happy. So he tries to bring that about through his mercy in different ways. Friendship in the material world is more like you give me something and I give you something. <laughs> and that goes on. Uh, other types of friendship is that when I need something I call this person 
and they help me get what I need. And then I will, when they help me get what I need, I don't really need them anymore. That's not friendship, that's business. So a real friend, I just heard Prabhupada speak that the other day. He said, a real friend is one who knows you and wants to help you, and wants to give you what you need, or wants to make you happy. That's a real friend. All right, Krishna. Also, Italiano? Okay. Or English? Uh, better Italian. Okay. <laughs> we always express ourselves more exact and perfectly when we speak our own language. No, don't speak Hindi now. <laughs> Do we have another microphone anywhere, somewhere in the place? No? Ramchandra Prabhu? I spent the moment though. <laughs> he's, he's, he's very subito. <laughs> It looks good. It's about all. Okay. Um, well, qualche volta quando facciamo servizio eh, abbiamo una buona intenzione, però visto che non siamo puri, all'interno è sempre questa buona intenzione è sempre mischiata con altro, che sia falso ego. E quindi cosa fare con questo mix? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can try to say in English. Sometimes when we want to do a service, we maybe have a good intention, but because we are not pure uh, inside, we have a mix. Yeah, the good intention, but mixed with I don't know maybe false ego. Uh, I don't know. And yeah, so we, we, we want something. We, we do the service nicely, but we want something from it. We're looking for some, some benefit, some gain. That's mixed devotion. Yes, and what to do with this mix? Get rid of it. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> that's all. Don't listen to your mind. <laughs> We say serve for the sake of service. There's times in our life when there's no benefit for something we have to do, but we do it because it's important, because it's necessary. And then we know that if I do it, it's good because someone will benefit from it and I'm the one to do it. And we won't get anything out of it. We may even have to suffer a little bit to, to serve someone. So that means that that's, that kind of service is pure. Prabhupada would give the example of a mother and a little baby, where the mother is giving all of her time and her love and her care to the child, and the child is simply a child, can't reciprocate so much. You know, passes stool in its diapers and wakes the mother up in the middle of the night. <laughs> and the child does whatever the child does, but the mother doesn't think, oh, you know, this is child is difficult for me. No, she, it's her love is there. And that overshadows any, over, any, over, any difficulty. So sometimes we have to find ourselves in the situation where we do something because it's needed. And if we can develop that mood, at least initially, that means in the beginning, then we can practice that. that to serve means to serve without any looking for anything in, in return, that's so. 
we want to make Krishna happy, so we, 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 we aspire for that. In other words, we try to serve in such a way that Krishna will be happy. So we have some desire. We want Krishna to be happy. We want the devotees to be happy. We want the devotees to, to get what they need to be to practice Krishna consciousness. But that's not a selfish desire. That's, nat that's, that's natural. But if you're thinking, I want to be, I want to serve because I want to be known as a great servant. <laughs> or I want to serve because, you know, you know, somebody will give me a donation if I do it nice. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some cookies or something. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole long list. <laughs> So in other words, to, to, to look for something in reciprocation, Rupa Goswami, he explains this. Ayabhilasita sunya jnana karmarana vritam anakulena krishna silanam bhakti uttama. That devotional service is free from any personal gain, or even gain done by philosophical speculation, even a desire to be free from suffering. That's still a material desire. I'm doing this so I can be free from suffering. That's still a material desire. And then he says, what is devotional service? Anukalena Krishna Silanam. In other words, to serve Krishna with the purpose of pleasing Krishna. That's all. Two things. To serve with the purpose of pleasing. So if we have that mood, then devotional service is easy, it's nice. And don't worry, Krishna will take care of you. <laughs> you might think, what am I going to get out of it? We don't have to plan. Krishna is better at serving us than we are at serving him. <laughs> Our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, said, what can you give with two hands that Krishna is taking with ten, and what can you hold in two hands that he's giving you with ten? You can't. He's giving us much more than we can ever imagine. And if we take some time, we can see every moment he's there in some form or another. We might give credit to this person or this situation or that, but it's Krishna behind the whole thing. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, this last point you uh, mentioned, to get free of material suffering, but we always hear that the goal of the human form of life is to get out of the cycle of birth and death. So is that again a material desire to want to get out of that cycle and go back to the spiritual world? Uh, it's, it's a it's a lofty desire, but it's still personal. <laughs> In other words, it's recommended. Higher than that is just ayinanda. What is that? Oh, no, what's that word? Nadanam najanam nasundaram kavitam bhajagadisha kamayam. Janmani janmani ishwari bhavatad bhakti arhai tu I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I don't want the pleasures of the opposite sex. I don't even want to be known as a great orator of spiritual knowledge. What do I want? Janmani Janmani Ishwara. So Lord Chaitanya is teaching that it doesn't matter. Serving you is so nice that all of these other things are insignificant compared to serving you. It's the happiness that we get to ser in serving the Lord is actually on the highest level of experience. But we have to be able to free ourselves from personal motivation before we can taste that. <laughs> and you see, you'll meet devotees who are like that. All they want to do is serve. That's all. They're happy. <laughs> right, Vishnu Priya? <laughs> In the beginning, you were told, uh, 
you were talking about uh, desires of um, Karen, that uh, they are asking God for something, and this is how they see the purpose of God. Um, I'm doing, a, a, I'm studying at a Bhakti Shastra class uh, for the moment, and uh, in fact, they are teaching us to uh, ask, so that we should ask uh, Krishna about uh, whatever we need, so also material things. And uh, I'm a bit confused. Uh, what is the difference between mm -hmm. uh, a beginner uh, bhakta who is asking Krishna and the uh, Kavya? If you're asking for something that you feel is needed in order for you to serve nicely, then that's fine. That's, that's not about you. That's about uh, be able to situate yourself in what Krishna wants you to do is to serve him nicely. So if you need some knowledge, if you need some skill, then to ask for that, it's not about you, it's about service, that's all. And if you get it, it's nice. If you don't get it, you still go on with your service. So, yeah, but higher than that, we don't expect everyone to be on the highest platform. Sometimes I speak the absolute principle. But then again, we have to understand, to get to that stage, we may also have to desire in a certain way in order to achieve a certain level of practice, then we can go to the next level. So bhakti is not that you jump from zero to 10. <laughs> you go gradually like that. But after a while, you start to think, what am I wasting my time asking for all of these things? I don't really need them anyway. What I really need is, is you. <laughs> And Krishna says, you know, I take care of my devotee. So, follow your teachers, that's fine. That's fine. But then again, as you make progress, you start to think, yeah, just let me serve. And then to gain the knowledge by which you can get fixed in devotional service is something you, you may have to desire for. What will help me to stay uh, become steady in my spiritual practice. So I might need some tr that type of knowledge. That knowledge is given in Bhagavatam, in Bhagavad Gita. It's all there. So knowledge is also a feature of bhakti because it situates us on the platform of uh, nishta, or what we say, we're not going to go, we're not going to deviate, we're, gonna, we're fixed. When you know the philosophy, you're fixed. Enough, enough of that knowledge in order to not become, what we say, influenced by happiness, distress, or any situation that comes up in this world. But the one who has that knowledge, they're not, they're not going to go away. Others who don't have that knowledge, they may stay, but they still find it difficult because they, they don't have the knowledge to keep them there. And others, because they don't have the knowledge, they'll look for something else as a, a way out. So, yeah. So what you're doing is fine. It's, it's recommended. Okay. Uh, we got uh, Radovino. And we also got um, Balaji? Yeah. So okay. Should huh? should class. Oh, yeah. We've got a Q&A session on Monday. Okay, so uh, we're running out of time. And there is prasadam for everyone. And kirtan after. So uh, should we take one more question? Or, okay, Radha, we know Didi. Do you have a question? Scholarly means a person who can learn, re memorize things, and can repeat what they memorize. Well, those who have knowledge, they are, that knowledge is a principle of how they live. 
that's because that's scholarly means I can read so many books and I can repeat what I read and memorize and sound good. That doesn't mean I have knowledge. Knowledge has to be applied. There's gyan and vigyan. Vigyan means intensified knowledge or realization. I know I'm not this body, as opposed to, well, I heard I'm not this body. Whose body am I? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not my body, maybe I'm somebody else's body. <laughs> so that's, that's, you know, you know, that's called, you know, scholarly knowledge. <laughs> it's called, what is called, what is it called? Overintelligent. <laughs> okay? Okay, thank you. I'll talk to you later, Balaji. I'll answer your question. We have to stop. I have to listen to my authorities. <laughs> so thank you. And then have wonderful prasadam. And those of you who, who still are alive, it's going, ready, you can come back and uh, we'll be in the temple for kirtan. Hare Krishna. <laughs>